Let me get rid of that. Once you've put your protractor on there, you've measured your 120 degrees, you're ready to draw another line. Now guys, that's the line that I started with right at the beginning. It is blue now. So I can fit the other lines in as well. Now what you will notice here, when I started off, my red line was a little bit shorter here. What's interesting when you do your rotations is that the distance that you have from the point A to the center of rotation is going to be the very same distance this way once the point has been rotated. Now that is important. Okay, so what did we do? We joined our vertex to our point of rotation. Lerata, I hope you're listening, my dear. Join that vertex, that point A, to the center of the rotation. Take your protractor. Mark off 120 degrees anti-clockwise. Make a little tick and draw a line from the center of the rotation through that tick. That is now somewhere on that new line where A is going to be. Now, the important part here is where is A? You're not going to sit there with a ruler. You can if you want to. You can. But more accurate is if you guys use a compass. Take your compass and put the center of your compass on the point of rotation, which is over here. Set your compass at that distance and draw a circular arc that brings it down to the point at the bottom. I've done that already on the next diagram. That's the result that you're going to end up with, guys. And where that circular arc crosses this line that you rotated, there is my first point that I reflected, oh, that I rotated 120 degrees, don't forget, 120 degrees anti-clockwise. Now, what's more important as well, or also important, Lerato, is you've got to label your points appropriately. If you started with point A, once you've rotated and you've got the position here at the bottom, we call it A prime. Okay, it's a little A with a dash at the top. If you can't see that, we write it as A dash. That means it is the point that was rotated anti-clockwise through 120 degrees. Now guys, I hope that made sense for the one point because the only thing that you now have to do is you have to do it for every single other point. So a quick recap again. I join my second point B with my center of rotation. I bring in my compass. I measure 120 degrees. If I go to the left diagram, I've brought it in, I've measured my 120 degrees and I have successfully brought or used my compass to draw that little arc and I rotated the point until the arc crossed the new line and there's point B prime. If I do the same for all the other points, you can see the next diagram there was B, B was brought down, I've brought down B prime. I did the same for C. There was C, it was joined with the center of rotation. I measured out on the green lines there my 120 degrees. I drew my line, I drew my arc where the two crossed, I had C prime. So, so far, if I was to put lines in here, I have rotated the following line segments. I've rotated AB, its new position is A prime, B prime. I've rotated BC, which was over there. Its new position is B prime, C prime. The only thing I still have to rotate is the point D. Once I've done the D, if you can see that, the same idea, bring to center, 
measure 120, draw out, and then with your compass, draw your arc, and you've got the final point, Lerato. So you do the same thing four times, and your final, final sketch, once you've done all the work, let me just get this a little bit smaller so you guys can see it at home, there it is. I have rotated successfully, rotated this quadrilateral anti-clockwise through 120 degrees and it's taken on the new position at the bottom of my screen. Now guys, what's the difference between anti-clockwise and clockwise? Quite simple. Anti-clockwise, as I showed you, goes against the clock. If I said to you rotated 50 degrees clockwise, you would have gone with the clock, the way your watch ticks off the seconds. Okay, that is clockwise. So all you'd have to do, still join the point, but instead of measuring the angle this way, which is anti-clockwise, you're going to measure clockwise, the other way around. Well, Lerato, I hope that helped you, that you can now rotate any polygon or triangle or quadrilateral, whatever, any polygon about a point of rotation. Guys, remember, it's very, very easy work, but you've got to be accurate. You need a protractor, you need a compass. That's all you need. You look for your center of rotation. Bob's your uncle. You can do the question. Okay, guys.